All right, David. So that's a top 10 interior offensive lineman. And hopefully that commit uh, holds for the next seven weeks to get us to National Signing Day. And then we go straight to the top of the board. Cormani McLean, the number one rated cornerback and player in the Sunshine State. He's uh, going to let us know here in a few days. Yeah, on Thursday, Mark, I mean, like I said, Florida Georgia Week's already, already big. Uh, but now with Kearney commitment early in the week, and then that's a few days before Cormani McLean, he has been the top target for the Gators coming into this cycle. This is one of the can't-miss guys, as you mentioned, the top prospect in the state of Florida, the top cornerback in the country. Uh, and these are the battles Florida has to start winning. And this is, looks to be a Florida-Alabama battle right now with Miami kind of on the outside looking in. Uh, Everything from what we can gather, Mark, I mean, you can look on 24-7, you can look on on three. All of, most of the predictions are going towards Florida right now. A lot of connection down there in Lakeland, not too far from Gainesville. There's a pipeline for Florida uh, that's been established throughout the years at that school as well. Uh, and, you know, Mark, Florida hasn't necessarily had the issues of still recruiting cornerback. You know, th that DBU debate, well, Florida's way behind on that debate right now. Uh, you, you, you throw in Ohio State, LSU, Florida, those are the three schools that always come to mind. Historically, when you look at that debate of DBU, but Florida has been nowhere near that in, in recent years. And not necessarily to do with recruiting, development hasn't been there. Has it waned a little bit recruiting? Yeah, you, you've missed these type of guys, and you've, and you've let them go to other places. But, you know, Florida wants to get back to that. You got Corey Raymond. You hired him from LSU. These are the battles you brought him in to win. You know, he's a good coach. He's a good developer, but you also brought him in to win these type of battles. And when you're going up against the big boys uh, and you want to close that talent gap, Cormani McLean is a must-get for the Gators. And everything looks good as we sit here a couple of days away from his commitment on Thursday for the Gators. David Waters, Gators Breakdown. Get on over there right here on YouTube or your favorite audio platform. So, David, a lot of fringe fans or people that aren't deep into recruiting would ask, okay, well, if I've got my choice, Alabama, Florida, I, I want to win championships, look at the record, what it is, NFL prospects. So that's leaning heavily Alabama's way in recent years. So what is Billy Napier selling? I mean, you can sell. I mean, Florida puts guys in the league still. They may not be winning games, but Florida's still putting a whole – I mean, Kyer Elam was a first-round draft pick last year for, 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 the, for the Gators at the cornerback position. And as I said, he was a really good player, but he, he wasn't that elite player that you're looking – I mean, still a first-round draft pick, but when you think of Florida DBs, you go back to Joe Hayden and Janoris Jenkins. Those are the two guys that always come to mind in recent years. Uh, Vernon Hargraves a, a few years later uh, that, you know, Forget the NFL success of those guys, but you know you're putting them in the league. It's up to <laughs> after that uh, to, to go on and play. When Joe Hayden, Janoris Jenkins still play. Joe Hayden just retired, had a really long NFL career uh, there. So you know you still have um, the, the the reputation of, of putting guys in the league. So that that still goes a long way for Florida. But for Billy Napier, you can sell that. Corey Raymond, you go back and look at all the DBs that he's put in the NFL and developed at LSU his first year at Florida now. I mean, you can always fall back on that. Florida's always going to be able to get talent marked uh, there. You know, it's just now it, it's selling to these top in-state guys that, hey, you can be – I think Florida's got 22 commitments right now. 17 are from the state of Florida. Uh, you can just tell that it has been an emphasis. It's, hey, let's, let's stay in-state and bring Florida back to – where we know they can be. Uh, so Billy Napier was brought in to recruit at this level, Mark, uh, and so far so good. You know, the only thing missing is that top-tier player, that elite player, and that will probably start Thursday with Cormani McLean. It would be a huge disappointment if Florida does not get his pledge on Thursday. And just to remind people, it's not only just about that player, but – who that player possibly actively recruits and yep. then who they passively recruit just by other players saying, well, if he's going to go there, then <laughs> – it's good enough for me. I mean, absolutely. Florida, I mean, it's um, really, really good DB class already for Florida right now. Uh, you know, you, you just got the commitment from uh, Dijon Johnson. He was committed to Ohio State, decommitted from Ohio State in July. Uh, and it was just a matter of time whenever he was going to flip to Florida. It took a couple months, but everybody kind of knew that was going to be the next move. He's a top 150 player. So now you pair him with Sharif Denson out of here in Jacksonville and Aaron Gates as well, uh, who's back there for Florida. And now you throw in Cormani McLean in the mix. It's already a good deep DB class for Florida, and it looks to get even better, even deeper for the Gators.